to another series of our Global Employability Expert Series. My name is Mirta Irre. I'm the head of coaching employability at Virtual Internships. And today we have a super interesting topic, which is discover the freelance world, your path to professional independence. And let's meet who is our expert today. Our expert is Federico Varela. Federico is a versatile and language-oriented freelancer with over 10 years of experience in the freelancing world. He has worked for more than 150 clients worldwide and has delivered coaching programs for renowned organizations like the Inter-American Development Bank. He is an expert in supporting freelancers and entrepreneurs. As a polyglot, he speaks lots of languages, Chinese, French, Portuguese, Spanish, English. Um, he can navigate diverse linguistic landscapes and use his intercultural skills to best serve his different clients. He has worked in Argentina, France, Chile, China, and New Zealand. He is currently working to foster a thriving work environment as a human resources manager for a Norwegian e-commerce company, leveraging his human resources degree and sociology masters. So as you know, we have someone who is very knowledgeable on the topic and who's gonna share all his knowledge in today's sessions. And so what are we going to explore today? As a freelancer, you lend your skills and talents to a number of clients on a flexible basis. As you aren't employed by a company or committed to a single customer, you have the freedom to choose the projects you want to work for. Today, we will learn what freelancing is and how the gig economy creates new opportunities to explore this career path, what you need to become a freelancer, if freelancing may be for you, and much, much more. So thank you, Federico, for being with us. And this is all yours. Great. I'll go ahead and share myself. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Excellent. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and do the slideshow. Okay. Is it good? Yes. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you, Mir, Damian, and Virtual Internships um, for organizing the webinar. And thank you for inviting me to speak about freelancing, which is something I love so much. And I like spreading the word. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, so today we're going to do a very top level overview of uh, the freelancing world and how that can be a possibility for all of you uh, to experience at any point in your careers. Um, we'll tap into the many different topics around freelancing, so uh, feel free to go leaving questions or comments uh, so we can address them after. Um, let's just uh, jump right into it. Um, what is freelancing? Okay, so the word um, comes a long way back from the Middle Ages. Uh, a freelance referred to a mercenary soldier, like the one uh, you can see on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, basically, they would offer their services and skills to various employers for a fee. These uh, mercenaries uh, were not part of an army or, uh, or uh, belonging to any particular lord. And uh, they would uh, basically uh, go around knowing that they had a very good uh, fighting skill and choosing who they were selling their uh, workforce, we can say, to. Um, they were most of the time very skilled fighters and uh, they would basically sell themselves to the highest bidder. So the one that would put more money down, um, if we say in a more informal way. Um, in pop culture, the earliest written evidence for the work freelance comes from uh, the book you are seeing again on the right hand side of the screen. It's Ivanhoe from Sir Walter Scott. Um, it's a book that has more than 80 years now, and uh, it referred to, uh, as you can see on the right hand of this uh, knight, it's uh, a lance. So a freelance was uh, a lance that was free, so not belonging to any lord or particular army. So uh, let's uh, leave a little bit etymology aside. And to put it simple and in more contemporary terms, a freelance 
uh, is a form of self-employment where individuals offer their skills and services uh, on a project basis or per hour without a long-term commitment. Um, and if we talk about uh, types of freelancing, we have to divide. Um, on the one hand, we have freelancers that sell themselves through platforms, okay? Uh, that can be, for example, Appwork or freelancer.com, Behance, there are so many. And uh, uh, for different industries, you have sometimes a particular uh, platform that serve those freelancers and those clients looking for uh, that kind of freelancers. And uh, on the other hand, you have the other 30% of the freelancing uh, workforce that works 100% on their own. So they take care of basically marketing their services and there's no platform in between clients and freelancers. So um, that's, that's basically the main difference between the two types um, in, uh, in freelancers that go into platforms your services are placed in a marketplace and they are benchmarked against millions of other freelancers. Um, in most of these platforms, the workflow basically goes like this. First, a client has to go into the platform and post a job. Um, in that job, he would specify skills, uh, budget, um, estimated time of arrival, also called ETA and uh, a fixed price or a uh, price per hour that client is willing to pay for that service. Uh, then on, on a second stage, the freelancer sees the job posting and makes a proposal for that. So for instance, if um, someone is looking for an HR assistant and the job posting says that they want to pay between, I don't know, 10 and $15, you can do a proposal that includes, I don't know, 1250 and um, details, uh, which is the value that you can add um, to, the, to the discussion. On a third um, point, the client decides based on, uh, based on uh, basically uh, their budget and uh, the proposals that that person received. Um, and in the end, the, the project is created and you start basically working for, for that person. Um, so basically, if we would have to talk about the, the perks or the advantages of working as a freelancer, I would have definitely to start by the flexibility you have uh, being a freelancer. Um, basically, you can choose who you work for as the nights we saw on the first slide. Um, this, in my point of view, is uh, tremendously powerful. Um, I've been in the corporate world for, for some time before starting to freelance um, in companies like Accenture or American Express and TMF. And um, let's say regular and corporate jobs demand you to be in one place for nine hours doing pretty much the same thing. And I always find that to be, uh, well, just not uh, aligned with, with what I wanted from life. Not and your I cup of have... tea, as the British would say. Exactly, yeah, that was not my cup of tea um, at that time, and still it's not his. So um, I always uh, thought that to be, well, to put it uh, lightly, completely insane. <laughs> and uh, um, basically we were all, uh, in my corporate experience, we were working nine hours and basically finishing the job in four or five and then sitting around and chatting and, you know, having having mates and, and stuff like that. So then um, it left a lot of unproductive time where I have to stay at a fixed place. Um, well, freelancing allows you to, for instance, work from eight to 12, then go have lunch, with your grandma, if you want, then hit the gym and then go back to work at three and work from three to six and then like finish your, your day there or continue working if you feel like to. Um, so then that flexibility is definitely a huge asset for me. Um, 
So then depending on the client, then time and location starts to be an independent variable. So it's something that you can choose. Uh, you can choose to work from a little town in Argentina or my big city, Mexico City, or whatever you, you feel like um, you, you, you want to be placed in. And also handling your own schedule, always taking into account the client requirements that are usually uh, clients in the in the freelancing world tend to be way more flexible because they are in the avant-garde of the labor market. And they are, of course, if they are trying to hire freelancers and they don't have a very uh, strict uh, corporate structure, or at least they are flexible. Mm, for instance, uh, Google is a company that uh, hires 50% of their workforce as freelancers. And that's 150,000 people. So basically, um, in that sense, uh, flexibility um, is what clients are also looking for when they look for freelancers. So, um, well, in that sense, um, if I, I can give a very, very neat example. Um, in my current work, it's a corporate kind of uh, position. I'm an HR manager, but the only time requirement is to be two hours connected in UK office hours. So then it's definitely not much to ask, given that UK time zones attach pretty much all the time zones in the world. So I could be in Saudi Arabia or in China and uh, work my two hours in UK time and then continue to do the, the shift that I feel like I want to do that week or that day. Then uh, as a second uh, point that I would highlight as an advantage is the diverse range of opportunities uh, you have to explore and to learn. Um, for instance, I started as a freelancer with a language oriented background um, as I speak, well, a couple of languages. So then I started doing translations, which is what I wanted to do at that time. And um, from there, I landed a customer service job. Uh, from there, I went to a project management job. And, you know, all these uh, different experiences that go summing up to, to, to a career and in where you learn. Sometimes it was more curiosity and audacity than uh, like um, in that sense if you really believe that you can learn something then sometimes you can add value as you go in the job that happens a lot in the freelance world also so um, the freelancing world is also called the gig economy because you work doing gigs for different clients um, it's a super diverse environment and in that sense is that I say that the range of opportunities to explore and to learn are limitless. Um, all 3.0 companies, as I like to call them, uh, will hire freelancers. So the avant-garde of the labor market is definitely there. Um, and this variety of clients also adds to your experience as a worker uh, in general terms. And the third big advantage I would I would highlight is global reach and remote set. Um, in that sense, you are not tied to your local market. Um, we were uh, in the introductions earlier, uh, we were talking with people from Saudi Arabia, I'm in Argentina. So um, sometimes the local economy doesn't give you a hand. And in that sense, being a freelancer um, and being paid in dollars, which is a strong currency, uh, definitely allows you to detach yourself from the local economy. And that's always a big plus. Um, let's jump into the next one. Basically, this is what I was talking about. Um, as you have access to the world market, you basically need a bridge and that bridge to, uh, to, to access all those clients that are worldwide are uh, freelancer platforms. Um, here, I, I just... Um, added a few, uh, Workana, that is a Latin American one, freelancer.com, that's worldwide, very, very strong in India, Pakistan, and the Middle East. Fiverr, this is big with the graphic designers, especially, and very, very small gigs. It's called Fiverr because it used to be that, I don't know, you, you would post 
um, as a client the job posting saying I, I I need a logo for my company and usually it was five dollars that's why it was called Fiverr now it's it, it definitely changed but they kept the name uh, Behance is also for graphic designers um, Toptal is uh, basically focused on developers um, and very very high C level corporate positions. 99 designs, of course, designs. Upwork, this is the biggest one in the market and accounts for 20 million freelancers at the moment. And this is where I, I did uh, most of my freelancing. So basically, uh, if you use your imagination, uh, these two stick men are uh, us, let's say freelancers. The platforms are the in-between uh, between us, freelancers and the world market. And also they serve as a bridge for us to reach all those clients that are basically looking for us for um, in different uh, projects they might have. Sometimes it's a hybrid kind of situation in where they have um, employees uh, and also they hire freelancers. Well, and um, in that sense, uh, we have here Ben Parker. Uh, we have seen that freelancer, freelancing can bring flexibility, freedom, opportunities to move and work from anywhere. And in the timing of your choosing, also you are immersed in an avant-garde labor market uh, with all the benefits that, that that comes from. Even culturally speaking, it's very, um, in a sense, stimulating to be surrounded by people that are in in the in the frontier of everything that's coming up, and then we we can probably engage in some discussions on AI. Uh, that's the next step for 3.0 uh, kind of uh, companies. So in that sense, uh, Ben Parker. Um, um, if you're gonna share the audio, I'm not sure if you're gonna hear it. If we didn't choose uh, share, do you wanna try it? To see if we can hear it. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, no, we cannot listen to the. No, audio. we can't. No, I think because when you share your screen, you need to select the um, tick share the sound option before. Okay. You can well, and share and we share again. Uh, okay. Let's yeah, let's do that. I hope I don't screw it up. But let's let's try. Um, you unshare the, the screen, and when you start sharing with Zoom again, you have a small tick below that says share audio, and then you can find it. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this again. Uh, Basic, advanced, advanced, right? No, basic. basic uh, when well, you just click share screen on the left below, you have to click share sound, and then it will give you the option when the uh, option opens. Just like the mm -hmm. usual click on share screen. Okay, wait, let's do it again. I usually go with Google Meets, so then, oh uh, yeah, I, I found it, found it, yeah. Sorry, uh, but I, I don't have that that possibility to click. It's a uh, answer the option. No, I, I, I don't think I have the skill to do that because it's great. So, well, anyways. Oh, I'm can, sorry. Yeah, Mirta, no maybe you can share the screen. No, I don't have that option either. Oh. That's so weird. Um, I don't know why. I'm checking and I'd like to, but I don't have the skill. This is the first time that happens. Usually, well, I'm sorry, Fede. No problem. I can just retell what Ben Parker would say. Yeah. You can share if, your screen uh, again with the presentation. Okay, let's do that. Um, and let's do a slideshow. There we go. 
great. Okay, so basically, um, on this scene, um, Ben Parker is reflecting with uh, with um, Spider Man, and uh, what what they say basically is, "You're going to become a man soon. You you cannot just go around kicking people's butts, even though they deserve it." And they reflect on power, right? And uh, with with the all the, the the advantages that I shared before. Uh, definitely as a freelancer, as a freelancer, you have a lot of power. Um, you have flexibility, you have freedom, you have opportunities to move and work from anywhere. And you can choose when to do so, right? So with great power comes great responsibility, says Ben Parker. And in that sense, uh, we are now going to move uh, towards talking about your responsibilities as a as, a, as freelancers, right? Because they are not uh, light responsibilities. They are um, basically it's the difference between thriving in the, the freelance world or not thriving. So um, in a sense, um, as freelancers, uh, you need to try and continuously provide value for, for clients and continuously work on your skills and deliver exceptional work. Uh, it's a little bit like Amazon uh, in a way, if uh, you can't afford to have a one-star rating, especially when you start your career. Um, that can basically grab you from the top shelf uh, to the last one super quick in platforms. So uh, at first, especially, you have to be um, very careful and very um, attentive to what the client is actually looking for. Um, also, uh, you can't afford to delay a project milestone delivery. Um, you are your own boss, and no one will be running after you so or supervising you uh, for you to do your job. So then... Um, I think that's the main point um, we should stress when talking about the word responsibility. Um, so then, yeah, you have flexibility. You have you can choose your location. Um, you can work whenever you you want as long as you uh, deliver. But uh, you are responsible for all your career, and no one is going to supervise you. So. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility in that sense. And uh, just when I was uh, preparing this presentation, I think um, Spider-Man 2002 came directly to my to my head. Um, that's basically the other side of the coin. Um, so you're not Spider-Man, right? Uh, no, no, I look like him. <laughs> I, I you, look, by... you have a. a... Yes, a little bit. You look a little bit like Spider-Man. Maybe you are and you don't want to say it. Well, Spider-Man would never say that. Exactly. He's Spider-Man. <laughs> so we'll leave that to, we we'll leave some suspense on that sense. Um, so to be able to succeed, uh, from my point of view, you have to have a PACE mindset. In PACE, P stands for patience. So you won't start nailing contracts the first week and not even the first month. Uh, from my experience uh, with the Inter-American Development Bank, coaching freelancers um, from scratch, the average time is uh, 1.5 months to, to see some connection with clients and to see that your profile has been uh, checked up. Um, then the A in PACE would stand for Audacity. Uh, that's what I mentioned before. Sometimes you are applying to a job in in on freelance platforms in where you don't have all the hundred percent of all the skills that are required by the job post. So, for instance, let's say if I have to give an example, let's say you are a PHP developer. So PHP is a um, coding language, and oh, sorry, this uh, job post uh, says that you have to have experience in the retail industry right? Um, let's say you don't have that. Um, well, sometimes it's about jumping a little bit into things and taking a little bit of risk. Um, you can prepare, of course, you can learn everything you can before the interview about the retail industry. You can see 
which is the main code used to code on Shopify or on, on, on e-commerce platforms. Uh, in that sense, um, that's what I mean by risking it a little bit and being audacious. Um, the C in PACE uh, goes for communication. Communication is definitely the most important soft skill you'll ever need in your life in general and in the freelance world in particular. So how you chat, how you do video calls, how you frame your discourse is the difference between being hired and not being hired. So I very much recommend you to work on that soft skill um, because it will pay off uh, greatly uh, across all your life, including freelancing, right? So um, the last, the last uh, word of the acronym uh, is E for empathy. And in that sense, it's so important to always, when you check on a job post in one of the platforms, that you, you put yourself in the shoes of the client. Um, what does he need? What is his pain point? What is he go, why is he going to a platform and looking for someone? So um, that's where you have to point your guns to when, when doing a proposal. Um, Another challenge, or we can call it disadvantage, is that you are everything. So there are no excuses. You are sales, you are marketing, you are research and development, you are human resources. So if you need holidays, you are human resources. So you have to go to yourself and say, hey, like I think I need to take a week off. Um, if you are not selling yourself is enough, you can go to anyone, you are sales. So you have to reflect on how you are marketing yourself in the platform. Uh, same goes for marketing, same goes for research and development. And in that sense, uh, what, do, what, what I'm meaning by research and development is you have to invest in your, in your, um, your knowledge, right? In your skills, in what you learn. Uh, what, what tools you acquire. The more tools you have, the more competent you'll be in the, in the, in the world market of freelancers, which I'm telling you, um, spoiler alert, it's super competitive, super competitive. Like, which is, I think, in my opinion, humble opinion, it's something very good because you rise above your local market. Uh, benchmarking yourself against all the people in the world. So you can imagine how powerful that is. Um, and you can see what the best are doing in the world, right? So that's always, it's a, it's a kind of a disadvantage that has uh, an advantage in itself too. Um, so then another thing you should mind uh, when freelancing is self-discipline and motivation. And this is um, a very important point because um, as I said before, no one is looking, uh, no one is supervising, uh, no one is asking you to wake up at seven, no one is asking you um, to, to, to keep it up during the weekend to study, um, to learn more. So in that sense, you need a lot of discipline this is very hard to learn and very hard to, to teach, but it's about little things, you know, sometimes waking up early, adding more hours to your day, um, finding uh, the moments in where you need to stop and to rest, um, using Pomodoro techniques, uh, you name it. It's um, now everything is online. So there are no excuses in into um, how and, um when you you go ahead and and uh oh, sorry again uh you go ahead and uh and um basically try and, and and use these tools to your advantage to to be more disciplined in general um and also motivation it's something that's hard in general for everyone in life um but in in, in freelancing you actually need to be very much persistent and um, results don't come very fast. Um, so yeah, in that sense, uh, you need to mind that part of, uh, of your mindset. Then another point, uh, to take care of is workload management. 
Mm, as you, as I said before, you have this power to decide how much or how little you work. Um, when you take holidays, when you need to stop, or when you need to work overtime. Um, in that sense, the risk of burnout is definitely tangible. Um, so you need to go ahead and and try and and balance a bit your life because it can get also uh, out of out of balance. Um, then another is skill diversification. Um, as you are um, in a very competitive environment, you need to work on your skills. If you are, for example, working uh, in marketing, you already have to know everything about SEO, um, e-commerce platforms, uh, Shopify. So um, you can always go ahead and check the, the competition and see what they are doing. and and. Um, what are the most successful freelancers learning now, and so on. Um, and another another um, point that we can call a disadvantage is isolation and lack of uh, communication. In that sense, uh, you work from your house, so feeling isolated is something that's uh, super common, especially if you live alone. Um, and Isolation goes in two ways, um, yourself from the, the community you're in and also yourself from the company you're in. So sometimes you can feel uh, that you're not connected in that sense, using tools like Zoom, Slack, Google Meets, um, they, they come very handy just to have a touch base call with your boss every now and then and, and feel that you are connected to something bigger than yourself. Um, and also my, my, uh, my take on that would be to try and be creative and find moments to work with someone else. There are a lot of freelancers in every big city. So, um, in that sense, being creative and, and trying to, 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 um, build moments with, with different people, that's something that, that can definitely help you. Um, so, um, what do you need uh, to start your freelance career? Uh, first and foremost, a laptop. So there's some hardware involved, of course. Um, you need a laptop or a desktop. I would recommend a laptop because you can take advantage of uh, location to, to go ahead and, and, and move and um, have that flexibility. Um, a profile in one or more platforms. Mm, uh, how to build your profile, all of that. Um, well, you can always go ahead and check my, my website. Uh, I left a link, um, two slides from this one. Um, so um, there are, I share some tips uh, in a kind of a blog to, to create a good profile. Um, there are some um, important points to take care of when, when you do so. And you can focus on one platform at first and then go moving to others to see, taste the ground and see, see how, how it's going in, in, in each one of them and do, do a, the proper research to, if you are a graphic designer, I would probably go for Behance or 99designs. If I'm a developer, I'd probably go for TopTal starting and, and so on. Uh, also building your portfolio. Um, um, you have a, 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 a life in where you had some experiences working. Um, in that sense, you can highlight all of those in your portfolio, everything you did, uh, internships also. Um, you can add them to that portfolio of experiences to, sh to share that in the, in the world market and to show clients that you um, have experience even though you don't have ratings or you don't have reviews on your on the profile you are building or you have built. Uh, that's key, especially when you're starting. A portfolio is something you, uh, you cannot afford to not have when you start freelancing. Mm -hmm. Then um, a basic understanding of the market. This is what I'm trying to share a bit here, how the market uh, goes, uh, how, how, uh, clients go about when they hire someone so that can be researched uh, online um, and uh, basically it's important to know where the clients come from where are they looking for how does the market move uh, where are the trends 
um, what are actually the most selling jobs, uh, what are people looking for, especially if uh, you are starting your career. Um, it's always good to know what the world is, uh, is looking for um, besides what you want to do. Then you can go uh, through your, your uh, freelance experience. You can go aligning those two so that potentially you can do what you like doing and that is um, marketable in, in, the, in, the, in the world market. Um, in that sense, uh, also mindset is something that I, I also try to reflect that on, on this, uh, on this webinar, uh, being patient, being resilient, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's what happens. Um, and, uh, sometimes communication mistakes, sometimes things that have to do with not, not doing the right questions, especially at first, when, when you start a project, sometimes you need to have, um, some key points that you go learning as you move that you, that, that you have to ask before every every contract um, to avoid miscommunication and uh, different expectatives that might not be fulfilled just after. And then you get a review for that. So sometimes you learn the hard way. Um, and then I'd say it's very important to do a to be introspective and to think. Uh, what your superpower uh, is, um, what what do I mean by superpower? Is something that you know you're good at and something that you can offer to the world. Um, and in that sense, if you can do some introspection and, 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 and sit down and write what you think you're good at and what, you, what you'd like to do, um, then that's a good start um, to go ahead and then look for the tools. You need to learn that. My first take on that would be to um, uh, create a profile in one of these platforms. Um, this is regardless of your nationality. Um, this doesn't have to do with where you come from. It's more about what you can offer and how you place your your uh, your proposal uh, to those clients. This is um, these platforms work as a marketplace. So clients go and they post different jobs, right? For example, I need a um, a marketing uh, assistant for my company that can work fifteen hours a week and that knows uh, some Arab and some English. Okay, then um, you have to build a proposal for that job posting and you send it. And then after that, the client will decide if you're the right person or not, as you compete with uh, X many uh, freelancers, usually between 10 and 30, 40 that apply because there are so many jobs being posted every day and every hour and actually every minute sometimes. So in that sense, where you find clients, regardless of your nationality, in freelance platforms, you can refer to uh, two slides back where I share some names and you can Google that and start from there. Great. That's good to know. So it sounds it's sort of a bid at some point, right? You are yeah, exactly. Okay, great. And there is another question here. Are there any possibilities to start freelancing with almost known, known experience, no work experience? How to make a successful portfolio in this case? Good question. Okay. Um, if you are studying, uh, for instance, let's say you are studying um, global uh, leadership or marketing, you can always refer to those studies in your portfolio um, that would be if you did an internship, like a virtual internship, um, like uh, the ones that are offered by actually virtual internships, you can you can go ahead and uh, and add that to your portfolio. And I, I recommend to be always very honest in the sense uh, I like in your proposal, you can say I don't have experience. Uh, but I'm willing to like add value and then maybe you can offer a lower budget as you don't have everything that's needed for the job. But if maybe you offer a 30% of uh, their whole budget for the project, then you are already competing because sometimes the, the owner of the company would say, okay, this person 
um, is not graduated, but um, he or she is willing to learn. So we can onboard that person and she can uh, maybe earn a 30% of what the, the, the original uh, job posting quoted, but it would be a win-win because you learn and uh, the, the client will have work done. Yes, that's really that's really important. And as you mentioned, internships are the first or one of the main ways to get experience. So you're doing it or you have been participating in an internship. So that's work experience as well. And I love the tip of being, okay, uh, I'm not be, I might not be the expert in the field I'm just starting, but I can give you a really special prize to gain the experience. And I'm sure on the other side, the owner of the business might be in the same situation. They might be starting and they might be, they need to save money at the beginning to launch the business. So we, we don't need to think about freelancing. Okay, I'm gonna be working always for, for Google. I'm gonna be working also for people who are entrepreneurs who are starting their business. So there might be a lot of opportunities for both. People who are starting with a job and people who are starting with the business. It's a good match, I guess. So we have another question here. How to be different from others to get the job in competitive markets? Nice. Okay, this is a very, a very interesting question. Um, it's hard. Um, I'm not going to 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 lie. It's uh, it's hard. Um, what you can do if um, I don't know if you are 19, 20 years, it's uh, go um, studying and getting close to what you want to do. So adding tools to your toolbox. Um, for example, if you are working in, if you are um, studying marketing, you can start learning different layers of marketing. For instance, SEO would be one. And then uh, once you have one or two or three, you're already competitive. And if you can't compete with skills, you can compete with price, as we as uh, we mentioned before in the previous question. Um, sometimes you don't. Uh, have all the skills needed and there are other freelancers that of course are going to in a way beat you in that field but you can compete with price it's like if you were a company exactly like if you were a company um, in that sense you can say uh, of course I, I, I recommend being honest and saying like I, I don't have uh, the experience that you are quoting on the job posting but I'm willing to learn and probably if, if you have time and you want to learn, you, you really feel that that industry or that client can provide you a lot of value, you can even work for free uh, at the beginning. And then you can have a conversation two, three, four weeks uh, after you start and say, hey, like uh, I've been working, uh, like I, 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 I really believe I'm adding value at this point. And you can definitely have that conversation in where you are paid. Nice. I totally agree that the best way is to improve the skill set, right? At the end, we as freelancers or, or we as employees of a company, working for a company, we're going to be paid for the value we bring to the table of this company, not for the time uh, we, we're there. So it's about the value. And the best way to create value is by developing skills, soft skills and the hard skills which I refer to the specific industry stuff. Okay, let's exactly. see if we have any, great, great. Any other question, not in the chat, not in the QA. Guys, do you have any other questions? To, would you like to open your mics? Okay, I, I think we can move on. So give me just one sec, I, uh, I start sharing so we can, great. So here you have, here you have the LinkedIn, profile of Federico so you can get in contact with him in case you have any other questions after the webinar you might have questions based on this information it will happen for sure so you can get in contact with Federico in order to ask him about the information here about his experience and stuff and there is also here um, a website listed what is this website Federico? Um, I have um, I have a website in where I'm Let's say I'm a freelance enthusiast. That's why I'm participating in this uh, webinar. I like to spread the word. I think that's the future of labor. So I, I really encourage each one of you to take a chance. And because this is where everyone will go in between, I think, 
two or three years to 10. That's the future. And in that sense, in that website, I try to share tips like the ones I shared today. Um, also, you can have a, a discussion with me. I have my Calendly um, account linked. So you can go ahead and, and book a call with me. Um, and um, yeah, if you if you uh, have still questions or you need orientation at your first steps, feel more than welcome to, to contact me. Great, that's a good one. Guys, you have a huge opportunity here. Right? Not always you have the chance to be in contact with an expert. He's offering his time, which is maybe the most valuable uh, treasure he's, had, he's got, in order to have a conversation with you, so get the most out of it. Um, Federico, can you share the LinkedIn link in the chat so they can yeah. get access? Okay, your profile and save it. We have here another question from Mashael. You know, freelancing depends on how fast you learn and provide your services. So, what is your advice advice in area of learning? Okay. Um... Well, if if you are super flexible with what you you want to study or um, what you can study, then I'd say coding would be a, a good uh, take. Uh, by coding, I mean C plus plus, PHP. Um, well, you have so many languages. Um, but what I would say you need to definitely take care of is uh, soft skills. So that's something that um, I think AI will take more time to replace. So in that sense, um, what makes makes us human, like communication, leadership, there are so many workshops online that you can take. Um, like uh, internet nowadays, it's limitless. You have everything there and so many resources are free and uh, accessible uh, for everyone with a computer and, and an internet connection. So in that sense, I'd say you can uh, always research which are the, uh, like you go into Google and you and you type, which are the most um, requested uh, skills in the freelance world. And you, you, can, you can start doing your research on that sense. Um, I'd say it's in the coding side of things, marketing, um, um, yeah, I, I and then corporate positions like um, lawyer, like uh, HR, uh, those are, are definitely uh, very, very demanded this last two or three years. Wow, interesting. Thanks for that. Mirta is back. Mirta, if you want to take over from here, we were just we have received so many questions, really interesting one. And Perigo was sharing uh, this uh, website his website and he's offering a calendly lots of time to have a conversation with him, which is great. So I'll leave Excellent. You. Thank you very much uh, for taking over. My internet just failed. And basically, Federico, I just wanted to know, like for you in your own experience, what was the most, two questions, what was the most challenging um, thing or aspect of becoming a freelancer and what has been so far your greatest achievement or let's say um, satisfaction moment? Mm. Okay, I think my, um, what made me learn the most was my mistakes. Um, my mistakes in communication with, with clients um i would i would uh, do a breakdown of all the communications i had with a client for at the end of one year and see how each one um reacted to my messages also on video calls i made a couple of mistakes sometimes at first um what took me some time was to adapt um even though i well i, I lived in new zealand when i was 19 so that gave me a a good a good take on like the saxon if we can call it kind of culture like english speaking countries um so i had advantage in that sense most of the times culturally uh clients are looking for certain uh traits in the way you treat them and the way you talk to them so i i think that having any international experience uh like i i think the one you're offering it's 
uh, definitely a big plus. I did that myself, like going to work in New Zealand for one year. And I think that gave me an advantage over most of other freelancers. And, okay. Well, then go into the second part. Yeah. Of the so question. just to 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 say, like you're saying that uh, intercultural communication or being able to adapt to the communication style of the client you're working with is super important. Super. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, each culture has a different way of portraying things and to framing um, the, the way they say things and what do they mean with what they say. And that is only learned through intercultural relationships. Um, so in that sense, I think that's key because um, you can tell when, when, when there's someone on the other side that don't, don't have that experience and it's a bit unflexible um, so in that sense, I'd say that's a key point. And the second part of the question was... Uh, your biggest achievement, your biggest moment of satisfaction. I think um, raising my per hour fee is something I'm proud of. Um, and also in, in the platform I work for, you have different badges that you go uh, adding as you have more clients and you have more interactions. I think having those badges is also uh, super, super good. And also doing what I like to do. Like at first I started doing all different, all these different things, even customer service. That is not that I dislike customer service. It's very, it's uh, very energy consuming for sure. Um, but I knew I was I was working towards a goal, um, so I knew it was like a, a pastime kind of job. It's not something I wanted to do all my life. But uh, now I can say that I do what I like, and uh, that's uh, super fulfilling. Excellent. Well, Federico, thank you very much. It has been super interesting, super insightful. We have shared already Federico's contact information so you can reach out to him. Remember to add each other on LinkedIn profile. So this is the moment where you share your LinkedIn profile and you uh, uh, start um, enhancing your network. Remember that as part of your, of your program, you have two coaching calls where you can discuss career topics, right? You can definitely talk to one of our very well-prepared coaches about your next steps, about how your internship is doing. If you have any challenges, you can then talk to them and they can give you really insightful advice. So you will receive an email to book your first coaching call and then you will receive a second email to book your second coaching call. So don't worry, you will receive this on time. And if you, when you receive this email, take advantage of this call and book your call because this is super, super useful. Well, uh, Federico, once again, Thanks a lot for your time. Um, this has been super insightful and I hope you will receive many LinkedIn connections from the people who are interested in freelancing. Great. Thank you, Mir, Tamian and Virtual Internships. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, well, uh, we'll stay in touch. So, sorry, uh, yes. sorry, could you share the link uh, uh, which is on the screen now? Uh, because unfortunately it's not possible to click on the, on the screen. Yeah, yes. in the chat. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. I will. Let me see if you can um, tell me if you can see it. Uh, we paste LinkedIn.com slash IN slash Federico Bar. Okay, there it goes. I think it's right. Uh, was it, you're sharing with hosts and panelists. You need to share it with everyone. That's Zoom. That's my experience oh, with Zoom. Or I there. can I can copy it and paste it. Don't worry. No, oh, you need you. to do it. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why does Zoom doesn't allow you to copy paste on the chat? I don't know. <laughs> we should ask. Uh, I, I recommend a, a very good platform. It's called Google Meets. And <laughs> <laughs> don't slash. be mean. Okay. There you go. Excellent. 
Well, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, I wish you all a great day, afternoon, wherever you are. And I hope you will come again for our next webinar. And when Zoom closes, you will have a short survey. Please complete it because that's the way we have to know how you liked it. And if you have any topics you'd like us to cover for our next webinar. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Great. Bye. Take care. Bye.